Okay, here I am at the stop point. Um, you'll see it on the screen. That's really where we told it to stop. And if you notice that um, it's got another, the reference point is now lowered. And what that's telling me is if I were to continue to sew and not do anything, um, it would go ahead and sew over here this part of the pattern and come back. But when it comes, does this vine, it's going to actually, that's the next stop point because that's the next time it crosses that line. And I, hopefully that makes, um, you know, that makes this sort of click for you that every time it hits that line, whether right or left, it's going to, to stop there. So when we're done with it, we need to really just push it back over. And that's what I'm going to do now because we're done with it at this point. So I'm going to take my clip mark and hit it again. This is where you'll be when, when you reach the marker. I'm going to hit clip mark. Oops, lower that. See where I'm hitting. And the first thing I want to do is get rid of it because I don't want that to stop me. I mean, that'll stop every time I go back and forth. So I want to just pull it back over to the left. And at this point, I'm going to tie off um, again. Um, this is where, why it's real important where you pick where the tie off is. And I want you to see over here on my quilt that there's a little thick line there at the end because I had to redo something. My, my, my machine sort of malfunctioned there. So if you see a little bit thicker line, that's I just had to restitch over that. But you'll see a line here, um, right here. And I put that line in to represent, that could represent a couple of things. That could represent where the quilt actually ends and that you want to make sure that your, your quilt stops there. That could represent a um, border. Um, I know there's been some discussion recently on the Yahoo list about quilting inside of borders. And yes, I have done a pan, I did do a panto that showed how to put patterns, even repeats, inside um, borders to, to run pantos like that. And if you haven't seen that, you may want to review that video also so that you can compare. This is actually leaving the pattern like it is, but actually cutting the pattern off in a particular spot so it's going to fill in um, the whole area. The only word of caution that I give you about using this technique in filling in for your panographs, um, or filling in for panographs within borders, is before you even set up that panograph, um, you need to go in and change your no jump stitches. You need to uh, change that from no jump stitch to give yourself some jump stitches. And it's in the utilities menu. Now I, I sampled a few things and I, I thought it might work that once we got into this, um, I could go into utilities and, and turn it off, but that didn't seem to work. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that we need to do that before the quilt is actually set up and it will work. But, um, you know, here again, that's just something you're going to have to remember. And I don't know if Zoltan has plans to change that so that we can, those jump marks, those jump stitches can be turned off and on a little bit more easier when you, you're within the, within the pattern itself. But, you know, it, you know, I may be totally wrong too. You may go into the utilities and turn off your jump stitches and it works. So I may have just, it could have been user error when I was playing around with it. But, Back to the topic. Um, when I want to make sure that it hits this line, here we, let's say this is a border. What I'm going to do is now put the machine over to where I want it to go. That's where I want it to stop. Now I'm going, I got rid of my clip mark on the screen. Remember I dragged it off to the right. But now what I want to do is bring in my clip mark. And I'm actually, once I highlight it, once I touch that clip mark, it turns red. And once it's highlighted, I like to use my snap to needle. Be whoops, snap to needle. Because then I don't have to visually think, did, you know, is that on there or not? Sometimes the screen can play tricks on you. Um, so always use the snap to needle once you've activated it. I think it's a little bit more accurate. So I'm ready now to continue stitching this. Um, let me think if there was anything else I needed to tell you. Nope. I think that was it. So I'm going to continue stitching this. I'm going to hit OK. Move the needle to the restart position. Just like if you were to break a thread or something, you can move it back a little bit or wherever you want to go. Um, and then we continue stitching. And I'll just go ahead and let it see what it's, oops, see what it's doing. It's, it went right to that line and um, did the stitching line right on that line.
So this is just a good, a really good little tool. Uh, there's just a lot of different reasons you might want to use it. Um, and I'm, whoops, and I'm done with that. I just wanted to add something also. Um, you may wonder, well, why are we doing this so close to the edge? Why don't we just go ahead and give it that clip mark before we even start? Um, you know, or even when we first realigned it, say we were checking and realigning, checking the shift to see if it was shifting or not, and why don't we just realign it then? Well, when, like I said, the further you go onto the pattern, you've got uh, thread can draw up you know, draw the fabric in a different direction, um, the thread, the batting, you, you know all the variables that can change the way the quilt pass actually quilts and how the fabric reacts to that quilting. So by taking it almost to the edge and then just letting a little bit, you know, maybe two or three inches at the most, stitch out there at the very end, um, you're just a little bit more accurate on and snapping your needle once all that stitching has taken place, you're a little bit more accurate on getting that to actually end where you want it to end. This is the same type of technique if you're using, if you're putting in, setting in borders. You can use the clip marker when you're setting in borders. Um, you know, I use line pattern a lot to put in my borders, but if you want, are using something you've already set up, you may want to put your pause marker in and check it and then, um, well, that would be clipping. That would be clipping things off, but it's still a way. The, the pause marker, even with your line pattern, anytime you go to st sew something, you're able to use this pause marker. It's just sort of a check, a check um, to make sure that things are still placed, you know, are still quilting out where you want it to quilt out. So I'm sure there's many more uses for this, but um, hopefully you understand the, the clip pause marker a little bit better now.